We currently have in law in Maryland the, uh, the failure to obey a police officer if they give you an order and, and tell you a lawful order that you're required to obey that or face eventual prosecution for that, that failure to comply. Uh, Mike, generally speaking, that would be an officer that's at a location, sees circumstances, and then directs people to act accordingly. What, what, what do you answer to the folks that might say, well, because I, I understand the, the, uh, the premise of the bill, but for the folks that are out there in a cir circumstance that the only information that they have is what they're hearing through the phone, and they're not able to apprehend all the other factors that are going on around them like a police officer would if he was there at the scene, how, how could we ask a 911 operator to make a judgment call with such a limited amount of information? It would seem like, um, uh, like we're putting not only them in peril for offering advice and consent, but we're also in, imperiling the person that's taking the advice because they, they, they're getting told this and they may not, their compliance may be a problem and they're ignorant, they don't know. They don't know what the best course of action is and they're relying on 911, you know, just like they give medical advice over them, there's protocols they follow to help people give CPR and all those things. And if we expect that from them, they're professionals. But I, I, I'm just curious that there's such a limited ability to know what's going on at the scene. Is this probably the best thing for us to do for the operators as well as the citizen? Well, I think your curiosity will be solved at line six that says, if the person is capable of obeying the instruction, obeying the instruction would not place the person or another person in danger of physical harm. And the failure to obey the instruction directly leads to another's bodily harm. So therefore, if you think that you're going to be hurt by jumping off the bridge, don't do it. You don't have to do it. There's no penalty. Oh, no, I, I wasn't really talking. I think maybe that's a ridiculous uh, comparison for uh, to look at it like that. I was thinking in terms of the, the, that the person on the other end of the phone can't possibly convey the circumstances that they're in and, sure. the, action, and the actions that they would normally take might be hindered by an operator. They think they're going to, you know, th there's a problem in the translation. I think you're trying to do too much obligatory uh, work out of an operator to direct somebody's, uh, you know, ability to do something. You referred to the Trayvon Martin case. And basically what you're telling me is if the 911 operator tells you, go back to your car and wait for the police, that if they don't do that, that they would be guilty of a crime. That's right. And, and yet there might be circumstances that are present at that moment. And then you, and then you that, could explain yourself. Yeah, and but, but then I, you could explain I, yourself. I understand, but I'm going to be charged and then have to go to court and explain myself. Yes. And, that, and I think that's probably a, a little bit of a rude shock to the way that we currently operate. I, I, I don't think so, because on, on the day... On the day that it was uh, unofficially Trayvon's day down here in Annapolis, it was a rude shock to me to see so many gray shirts with hoods on in sympathy for something that needs to be done. All, we're not saying that people shouldn't act out of their own common sense and that if you know that you shouldn't do something that's going to hurt you, that you do it. We're just saying that when you, get, when you describe a situation, which the situation might not be as you describe it, but if it's as you describe it and you are capable of ceasing and desisting whatever you're doing, then you should stop. I, I just, I think the bill, although well intended, is a, is a significant overreach of, of uh, capacity for somebody within the government to be able to convey a truth to somebody on the other end of a phone in circumstances that are beyond anyone's control. And I, I just think it's I, well intended, but, but misguided in application. That's all. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Now, let's see. Anybody else in favor of the bill come forward and testify? All right. Now, let's hear from the opposition. 